Hello and welcome to join me on a trip to Dalvík, a nice little town by the north coast of Iceland, and we start the journey on a map in order to know where we are. This is Iceland's deepest fjord, Eyjafjörður, and Eyjafjörður means a fjord of islands, despite the fact that there is only one island there. West of the fjord, we have the Tröllaskagi Peninsula, the part of Iceland with the highest elevation outside the central highlands, and the Tröllaskagi means the Troll Peninsula, but in fact there are no trolls there. We think that the elves somehow scared them away, so the Troll Peninsula, as a marketing name, is no good for the tourist industry on a peninsula, but it offers though one of the most extraordinary mountain scenarios in Iceland. Harts coastline and the deep fertile valleys carved out like an artwork by the glaciers, and the town we are about to visit is by the mouth of a one such valley, and it is my duty to visit the valley first before the town, because it was the people from there who laid the foundation for the town Dalvík as you know it today. And this is the valley, Svarvada Dalur, named after the first settler, Þorsteinn Svörvuður, but Svörvuður is not an Icelandic name, but it's believed that it stands for a man of warfare. But Þorsteinn Svörvuður took land in Svarvada Dalur on the advice of Helgi Magri, who was the man who settled all Eyjafjörður. And this is Helgi's statue in Akureyri, located only a few hundred meters away from my childhood home by a street that was named after him. And Helgi Mæri means Helgi the Slim, so I grew up by Helgi the Slim Street in Akureyri. And since Helgi's settlement was so large, he would share some of his land with many of those who later came, his relatives, and of course, Þorsteinn Svörvuður. And there are ancient stories about warfare over land in a valley, and this is still a valley of proud people, sometimes still arguing over land. But the name of Þorsteinn Svörvuður is still kept alive, like through the local sports club for young people that is now 100 years old, and its name is Ungmennafélagið Þorsteinn Svörvuður. And I have often wanted to go to a football match there just to hear how the supporters encourage their team. Like, uh, will they shout out the full name of the sports club? And uh, what does it do to the other team? Like, uh, does it disrupt the opponent's uh, concentration, leaving them laughing while the Ungmennafjallag Þorsteinn Svörvuður goes for the goals? So that's something I just have to find out. And uh, since all traditions live on around here, one can spot a certain type of nationalism, or perhaps we should call it a valleyism in this case. And the country people around here are proud of their valley, just like they are proud of the third president of Iceland who was born here. And when those people get together, the pride can best seen as they sing their own local national anthem. And all rise when it is played for whatever reason. It is by the mouth of this valley where we find Dalvík, our main destination of today. But the name is like many Icelandic place names, assembled of two or more words, and in this case the words valley and bay, meaning the bay by the mouth of the valley. And it is a good starting point to find out what Icelanders think of first when Dalvík is mentioned. First I'm mentioning the great Dalvík earthquake in 1934, then the herring years, high-tech fish industry, Eurovision, John McAfee, and the great fish day. But I will cover all that later on. But uh, as for myself, I also remember this place for its many strange place names. So I'm starting with the period before this became a town. It all started here by this sandy coastline called Böckvis Staðasandur, named after Böckvis Staðir, where once stood a farm and a prayer house dating back to the Middle Ages, according to archaeological remains. 
and the Bugwish Stadir means Bugwish Place. And the name of that farm had such a meaning back then that we have also Bugwish Stadafjall, meaning Bugwish Place Mountain. And then we had the valley Bugwish Stadadalur, Bugwish Place Valley. And to top it all, we have of course Bugwish Breut in town or Bugwish Street. But uh, this first part of the name, Bugwish, is nothing that we can relate to using uh, proper Icelandic. And the people around here understood that, so they had a good taste to name the town the bug free name Dalvik. And uh, we will always be grateful to them, because the other option was, of course, the original name Bugwish Stada Sandur. And my point is also that Icelandic place names are not just bugging formless. The first structures around here were only a few sea camps and fishing related structures that the local farmers used alongside with farming. The first all year round houses were turf farms, but the first timber house was built in 1899 and it still stands. The first motorboat arrived to Dalvik in 1906, but during the 19th century Iceland was indeed a very poor country mainly using rowing boats for fishing. But the people around here used the Industrial Revolution of Iceland, the number of houses gradually increased, and it was in 1909 when Dalvik earned its official recognition as a town, and grew to be one of the most important fishing towns in the north, although no permanent harbor was built here until 1939. Until that time, wooden piers were used, like this one, and everything looked well for this growing town or until June 2nd, 1934. It was during lunch hour when a big earthquake struck Dalvik. The first shock, lasting a minute and a half, was the longest and the strongest, followed by such noise that people thought it was an explosion. It was so hard that even potatoes recently planted were tossed up from the soil and the destruction left over 200 people homeless. The nearby island Hrise was also hit bad, leaving 70 people homeless and not a single soul would stay indoors for the days to come. The aftershocks were constant for the first hours. Many of the houses that survived the first earthquake would collapse during the period of aftershocks and it would last for weeks. But uh, to great relief, no one died. The weather was good this summer, which made uh, everything easier, so people made their homes in sheds and tents, and uh, neighbors from nearby areas tried to assist as much as possible. The people of Dalvik received financial help from all over the country, and also from abroad. The town was uh, rebuilt, and uh, never since had there been such an earthquake in Eyjafjörður. But as for the geology, the earthquake uh, occurred on the so-called uh, Dalvik alignment, a part of the Tjörnes uh, fracture zone, and for the reason how long and complicated that story is, I decided to make a separate video with more details covering the earthquakes later on. And it's also due to some of the many questions I have about that event, like regarding the size of the earthquake that was estimated to be 6.2, 6.3, or of similar magnitude, as the 1976 earthquake in Kopasker on the northeast corner of Iceland. But uh, when I look at old uh, newspaper articles, I somehow get the feeling that the Dalvik earthquake was in fact larger. But uh, as I said, I will dive into that later because it's all a part of a bigger picture. And a part of that bigger picture is that uh, scientists have already warned us, especially the people in Husavik, that there is already enough tension on the Tjörnes fracture zone, so they can expect a huge earthquake up to magnitude 7 to strike at any time. And the magnitude 7 is the largest earthquakes that we get here in Iceland. But uh, let's move on with the history of Dalvik after the earthquake. When Iceland gained independence in 1944, the herring export played a big part in Iceland's financial freedom, and Dalvik was for a while one of the large herring towns, but the herring years were in a way the Icelandic uh, Klondike gold rush, and uh, like in Klondike, the gold from the ocean wouldn't last. 
Overfishing left many towns in ruins, but Dalvik survived. The first big troller came to town in 1958, and the population had already increased to 900 inhabitants in 1960, and ever since, Dalvik has been a town of fishery and related industries. A highly innovative plastic container factory was established here over 30 years ago, and that company, Cyplast, is among uh, the best known export companies in Iceland, and they do operate two other factories in Canada and Spain. In 2020, this new fish factory opened up, and it is one of the most advanced production plants in the world due to cutting edge technology and equipment. And those two companies form a certain core in regards of job opportunities in this municipality that grew even larger in 1998 then three municipalities merged into one Dalvik, Svarvardalur Valley and Árskógsreppur where we find this town Árskógssandur located just south of Dalvik and we are over that town now overlooking the mouth of Eyjafjörður Dalvik and the Troll Peninsula to the left of us and we see the ferry on its way to the island Hrise, and uh, notice the mountains behind the ferry. This is where the road to Ólasfjörður is, yet another small Icelandic town, and this is how it looks from Dalvik, looking nice for the first kilometers, but as we move north we see the remains of the most dangerous highway in Iceland, where many fatal accidents occurred. It's possible to hike there today, to this fabulous viewing point at the northernmost end of the mountain, and this is how it looks from the other side, Ólasvörður. The road tunnels to Ólasvörður opened in 1991, and in total there are four road tunnels through the mountains on the peninsula, but I'm linking to videos to show you more of them. And the huge tunnel construction around there was going to change a great deal for the people who live on the Troll Peninsula. And I will cover that better in my upcoming work about the other towns around here. Just a few kilometers north of Dalvik we have this waterfall. It's easy to miss it from the highway, so it's one of the hidden pearls we have, but it's not always looking like a pearl. It can look dull, but like with so many of our natural wonders, Weather and light play such a big role when it comes to photography here in Iceland. And some subjects undergo such changes in different light that it is as we are photoshooting a different place when we are photoshooting in different light conditions. And this place is one of them. My dream shot of this waterfall is a drone shot facing north with the midnight sun in the background and the spray from the waterfall dancing in the wind with the seagulls in the midnight sun. And this is one of the best places in Iceland to be at when the sun never sets during summer solstice. The whale watching industry is strong around here, since the whales are just so close by the towns. And uh, after I got myself a drone last summer, I got the urge to capture some whale footage but the sightseeing boats are just not designed for drone landings, but uh, I got this idea that I'm sharing with my fellow drone users or how to capture them whales. We can see online the boat traffic, including the whale boats and the location at any given time, and where the boats are, it's where the whales are. So if they are close to land and it's not too windy, like uh, during this day when I was flying uh, beside this whale boat, it is possible to do whale photography or to capture video shots of them, if you have a drone with a few kilometers range. And uh, that is what I will do next summer. But there are more things to do for tourists around here, like exploring some of the many hiking routes, sightseeing tours on horseback, but that is uh, as natural as it gets. Sea angling is a great sport that I love, you never know what you're gonna get. And then, this is also a great place to do nothing. Just uh, experience the stillness and the spectacular view that can be found all around. And uh, during winters, this is a great location to observe the northern lights, so very close to the Arctic Circle, and uh, mostly free of uh, light pollution, with a uh, huge selection of uh, photogenic backgrounds. The Dalvik port serves as a service harbor for the island Grimsvei, 
From there, it takes only three hours to sail to Iceland's northernmost community, which lies on the Arctic Circle, and that is one of the natural pearl of Iceland, with millions of puffins and seagulls and 60 other inhabitants. So it's a small but welcoming community, and it's also possible to fly to Grimsey from Akureyri, since there is an airport on the island, but Akureyri is the capital of northern Iceland, and only 30 minutes away from Dalvik. But winter tourism is generally growing in the whole fjord. Heli skiing is getting to be quite popular all over the peninsula, and there are companies who specialize in that business or to find good slopes for the clients, fly them up there, and uh, drop them off. But Dalvik offers also more traditional uh, ski slopes, nothing that competes with the Alps, of course, but they were good enough to produce some of the best skiers in Iceland, and it is possible to come skiing from the mountain all the way down to the swimming pool and relax in the geothermal water, and that is a great combo. But I would, however, honestly not describe Dalvik as the most vibrant town here in the north when it comes to the overall mood, uh, selection of restaurants and such. That's where Akureyri kicks in, with its uh, 20,000 inhabitants and uh, international airport, and the nearby town Siglufjörður is also a better known uh, tourist destination with its uh, huge uh, tourist infrastructure built up in recent years. So Dalvik is more of a family town. The kids have this uh, great new football field just by the sports center. There is a golf course nearby, but uh, on the downside, it snows a lot around here, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot. As we look north, it is just the Arctic Ocean that awaits us. It's nothing there to provide the town with some shelter from the cold Arctic winds, and there are winters around here when the snow gets as high as the light poles. And when the winters are long, it is not good for the mentality, or to have snow in town into April or even into May, and overall, it takes a special kind of people to live in many of our smaller towns around Iceland. So we have to ask, what kind of people does this town breed? And a part of the answer is Eurovision composers and singers. And there I'm into a whole new territory. But the interest in Eurovision here in Iceland is a worthy subject for a separate video actually. But a big part of the reason though is that we were so optimistic. In the first years we participated in the competition, the victory was always just around the corner, but it never happened, and we can always have a good laugh when we think back. But it is a strange fact that five Icelandic representatives in Eurovision have lived in Dalvik at some time point, and three of them were born and raised in a town, like this guy, but this is his official Eurovision video, and he is there trying to sink his way into the hearts of Europeans while cutting an Atlantic cod. But uh, to our surprise, again, he didn't win Eurovision. But he is a great singer though. And the name of this song was uh, Ég á líf, or I have a life. But a uh, few years earlier, Iceland came actually close to winning with another boy from Dalvik singing a song called And all Icelanders hope that those Dalvik boys will get alive after this Eurovision mess. But uh, I'm not done with famous people from Dalvik. The most famous person from this region is of course Johan the Giant. His story is remarkable, but when it comes to his personal life, it is both sad and dramatic story. This uh, huge man had uh, little or no chance of finding a suitable job while growing up around here, and he ended up as a wanderer around the world. He did a lot of circus work, where he himself was one of the main attractions, and he never liked it, like you can hear himself say in an interview that I have on my channel and I'm linking to. But uh, Johan was also a film actor from time to time, mainly due to his size, and he is the only Icelander who has acted in a movie with Jodie Foster and Gary Busey. And there is a museum in a town that covers the story of Johan the Giant, 
the earthquake in 1934 and uh, other chapters in the local history. And uh, speaking about famous people and Dalvik, I have to mention that two years ago, we got the news that John McAfee, the founder of McAfee antivirus software, appeared to have been hiding in Dalvik, in this apartment, above this restaurant, as he had been running away from the laws since 2012. All of a sudden, he stated on social media that someone had found out about his hiding place in Dalvik, and he told the world that he had moved on. But was he ever there? I don't think so. I think it was a gig to mislead the police, and if he would have stayed there for a longer period of time, even keeping his identity a secret, someone in town should have been able to confirm his whereabouts. But that didn't happen. It is impossible to leave the town without mentioning the Great Fish Day, a hugely popular annual tradition held every year for the last 20 years or so during the second weekend in August. The original idea was to show generosity and to have this fun weekend where residents of the town would offer guests free fish with the help of local companies and others and this idea just took off in a big way. Up to 30,000 visitors have visited this town at a time, but the weekend begins with a homemade fish soup on Friday evening. That's when guests of the town walk between people's houses where they can taste different versions of fish soup. The town is so crowded with people during the whole weekend that the neighboring towns will be crowded as well since all those people can't camp in Dalvik for this uh, family entertainment program that covers a whole weekend. And the best part that this is not founded or driven by some business model, it's uh, more from the idea of uh, friendship and generosity, so it's unbelievable what this uh, free meal has done, bringing such a mass of people together in a spirit of kindness. And uh, that's how we know the people in Dalvik. And the people around here can be very proud of the fish day. But during other times, even during a high season in the tourist industry, this is an easy going town and not one of our high profile tourist spots. Nor has the town been redesigned around the tourist industry, like we see in the nearby town Siglufjörður. Dalvík is just an Icelandic fishery town. What you see is what you get. It is also a place that shows you a bit of everything about Iceland, battling the natural forces, and what created the Iceland of our days in a nutshell. That is Dalvik. And my journey through Icelandic towns will continue. My first videos in this series did only have subtitles, and mostly shot from the drive around angle, but I'm replacing the first videos little by little, and adding more towns as I move on. So it is a huge project and I'm very grateful for all comments and questions. And I would also like to hear if uh, there are some information missing that you would like to know about so I can keep them in mind in my upcoming projects. And uh, I do want to make it clear that my channel is not sponsored in any way. That uh, leaves me with the freedom to tell you what I truly think. But Icelandic towns are as diverse as they are many and Dalvik got a good outcome on my behalf in this video. So I'm ending this with the last verse of the national anthem of Svarvadalur, since I actually like that poem, and I'm going to do it the original way in Icelandic. And with that, I am sending you best regards from my home country, Iceland. Hann er töfrandi höll, hann á tignarlega fjöll, Þar í löfðbrekkum lækin er hjala, mér er kliður sá kær, ég vil komunum nær, hann er öndvegi íslenskra dala.